Hello again, Gooners! Do I usually lose? I think I usually, usually, I can't even say it though, usually use this hand. A lot of waving going on, uh, not a lot of talking. In fact, that's unusual for me because I'm not a big waver. I'm more of a talker than a waver, have to be honest. Anyway, wavering. I'm wavering before I get, get cut loose and really get with it and talk about, well, I'm not going to get with it. Not with a number nine on my chest. Anyway, what I am going to do is tell you what's coming up. A number of things. There normally are. Well, this time, I'm not going to leave you disappointed. Or am I? Possibly will. Anyway, we're going to talk about, or I am, I, I'm the big we at the moment. So the big we is going to talk about Shad Forsyth. Not in great detail, but I will mention him. Almost definitely. I'll, almost definitely. You know, I think when I say almost definitely this time, I sort of mean really definitely. I'm going to definitely talk about Callum Chambers. Because he, he, deserves, he deserves a bit of, bit of chat. As far as I'm concerned, you'll be, you might be surprised on what I'm going to say. I'm not sure. Perhaps you will. What about Meza Ozil? What about him, you might say? Well, I have you know, I've actually written something about him. So that's why I'm going to talk about him. Also going to talk about Hector Bellerin, by request, no less. Uh, Sammy Kadira might say something about him. Because obviously, Sammy Kadira, if I say something about Sammy Kadira, I'm going to get loads of views. And... On that, on that same tack, I may well, I may well even mention Edinson, Edinson Cavani, and and you know I'm not, I'm not actually doing it for views because how many views am I getting? Nowhere near enough actually. So until those, until those checks start rolling in, which they're not, they're not even, <laughs> they're not even, they're not coming in by any sort of means of transport at the moment, you know. So the next time I see a check rolling my way I, I think I might faint you know because it would just be a rare thing normally it's me I'm I mean I'm like I, I might as well be a famous footballer or something the amount of things I have to sign and they are called checks and I really don't like signing them even in this day and age some people want checks believe it or not anyway enough of that I'll tell you what what should I start with I'll tell you what I may well start with shall we talk about Shad Forsyth slightly well Shad sounds a bit like um, a tube station to me which one am I talking about? Oh, well, a country um, in the Middle East called Chad. But this is Shad. And Shad Forsyth was going to change our fortunes, not so much on the pitch as off the pitch. He was going to change our fortunes. And unfortunately, you may argue, or you may not, but I personally would argue they haven't changed that much, have they, in terms of the sick bay. The sick bay is full of crocked players, which led to me writing the following article which I might even read to you um, but before I read that article to you because before you before you sort of keel over and and um, and fall asleep before I read that article to you I've got kind of a little tiny revelation to bring to you because uh, recently I got snapped up by the Metro well not really snapped up they contacted me and said that they would like me to provide a blog for them which was very kind of them um, they've obviously been looking for people to, to blog and, and I do plenty of it anyway so it's, it's a big honour for me to work for, um, in, a, in a very sort of strange roundabout way for the Metro but you know ultimately it's still, uh, it's still not checks rolling in is it at this stage but, but you never know I mean I might get a bit of um, exposure of the right kind or perhaps of the wrong kind when I read this headline which is not my headline but my article where is it I'm going to read it to you now Arsenal's injury crisis takes a turn for the worse during the international break. Well, answers on a postcard, please. Anyone that can spot what is wrong with that headline. Arsenal's injury crisis takes a turn for the worse during the international break. Anybody like that headline? Well, you know, if you love it, just let the Metro know. Personally, I wasn't, I wasn't that pleased about it. Bearing in mind, my original headline was this. Croc and Dagger at Arsenal. It was pretty straightforward but before that I worked on another headline which was uh, Arsenal was still crocked with no sir uh, it's a bit of a tongue twister this one bear with me Arsenal was still crocked see I told you I can't say it I'll try one more time and then I'm giving it up alright I promise Arsenal still stocked with crocs well when I was talking about crocs perhaps perhaps some people at the Metro thought well a bit of advertising for, um, for a shoe brand can't be having that well, clearly, I wasn't trying to do that at all. But you know what I finally ended up with? <laughs> this, this might be my new headline if I'm right about the same subject. Bearing in mind, Shad Forsyth. I'm going to call it 
strictly cropped passing. And then I'm almost hearing the theme music from the BBC series, but I won't because I won't even try and sing it because obviously YouTube would have their issues with that and then they'd start saying, oh, we don't think you paid royalties to Strictly Come Dancing for using Strictly Cropped Passing and you can't sing the theme song even with your own with your own lyrics. You know, that's what they're like. Anyway, so there you go. There's, that's my bit on Chad Forsyth because I've written about him before. Um, obviously, I'm... Well, not obviously, I might have met him, but I haven't. I haven't met Shan Forsyth, but clearly he's a step up. And uh, looking at the physioroom.com, you should have a look at this website when you get a chance, but according to that particular website, we haven't actually got as many cropped as other teams. Surprise, surprise. And uh, forgive me for looking at my phone, but, I mean, that's where that's where that information is. Uh, so, where is it? I'll probably... I'll probably um, clicked it off now but anyway it was on there and there were teams like Liverpool and Newcastle who had more crop players than us and that's mainly because the ones that have come back there were a few there were about four teams with more crop players Chelsea were have got five and we've got seven um, the other anyway the other teams above us Liverpool Newcastle I can't remember the others perhaps Southampton uh, don't don't hold me to account if I get that one wrong but the players that are still cropped, obviously Theo is coming back. Great news. Uh, he won't probably go straight in the team because he's been out for nine months. Then we've got Serge Gnabry. Uh, Gnabry, sorry. It's not Sir Szczesny, no matter what anyone says, because I spoke to a Polish guy and he told me it's Szczesny. He exactly said it like that. Szczesny. So that's what the commentators should say. They should stop, stop in their tracks, stop everything they're doing. And when she Chelsney gets the ball. They should just, you know, take a bit of time to try and get, try and get that sound. Chelsney. That is how you pronounce Chelsney. Not, not the way we're hearing it. Not Sir Chesney. I mean, what? Who, who came up with that? Anyway, perhaps, perhaps it was Chesney. <laughs> I call him. What do I call him? Chesney. Oh, perhaps it was Chesney's uh, sense of humour kicking in there. But Gnabry. I mean, how many other players are we going to have with these silly, silly names that? You know, Matt. Perhaps we could take we could take a, a letter from their first name and then add it onto their surnames, and then you get Jewilshire, for instance. And who else would we get? Um, uh, we'd get uh, Madab Madabushi. How about Madabushi? That sounds pretty good. But Madabushi, by the way, um, he's he's out until December, according to PhysioRoom.com. Um, I think we've heard that one before, but no exact date when he's coming back. Same goes for Ojiro. Ojiru instead of uh, you know Jiru, and then we've got uh, Dospina. That kind of works, doesn't it? Well, Dospina or, or Spina, he's um, he's out for an indefinite indefinite period, as is Meza Özil. And I was going to read the article about him that I wrote, primarily about him. Uh, Yaya Sonogo and uh, Marteta are on the way back, 18th of October, no less. So what day is it now? Just a week away, so not too long to wait. And then Aaron Ramsey, we're looking at 1st of November. Because people ask me these questions. People bump into me and say, when is this player coming back? When is that player coming back? As if I'm their physio. It's, you know, I'm not the physio. I wish, I'm, I wouldn't actually, no. Tell a lie, I wouldn't really want to want to have that job. I'd rather be manager, sort of just standing on the sideline going like this. Because that's what that's what managers do. And I know it's, if I do that, it gets, gets a lot of... Um, you get a lot of kudos for that, going like this. It's a bit penguin-like in a way. Or no, penguins are sort of more like that. But anyway, I'll do this. Copying Arsene Wenger. I watched Arsenal too much for my liking, or or perhaps Arsene's liking as well. Anyway, there you go. So that's the injury situation. I was going to read you the article, which which has the fantastic title on the Metro of let me let me uh, never forget that title. Um, Arsenal's injury crisis takes a turn for the worse during the international break. And really, that's a bit more of a tongue twister than my Ars Arsenal still shot. Let's see, I can't read that. It's a serious tongue twister. Arsenal still stopped with crops. But I really love that um, one with the strictly, strictly crop passing, even if I do say so myself. That's pretty arrogant. Sorry about that. Um, but I liked it. I, it took me ages to come up with it, though. <laughs> When you think about it, I've gone through it's a proper evolution going on there with uh, with headlines, and I think you know if I'm not saying people people should you know aspire to do something like that because clearly I'm not I'm not 
I'm not the bee's knees in the journalist world, far from it. But, but you know, you can see the evolution there. I went, step one, not a bad, not a bad headline. Step two, bit better. Step three, bit better still. And then what happened? It ended up as a rubbish headline that I had no control over. So welcome to the world of journalism. And that is exactly what it's all about. Oh, um, because, you know, as I've got no control over that and also got no control on my phone. So I'm going to reel these headlines off to you. Um, not the one I was talking about earlier because this one's just popped up. It's about um, Hector Bellerin, who somebody bumped into me. Somebody bumped into me and said, why don't you talk about Hector Bellerin on your vlog? And I, I said, I'd love to do so because I'll tell you what, I watched Hector Bellerin quite a lot playing for the... Uh, for the youth team, if you like, you know, the under 18s and whatever, I don't know, under some things. And, um, well, they were, it was a number, right? So let's not, let's not, let's not start imagining too much. Anyway, the under um, 18s, let's say, Bellerin played really well for them. And he's just, when he rampages up the wing and he's, he's pretty difficult to stop. He's got a lot of skill, a lot of pace, and apparently he's broken all the, uh, all the records in terms of, um, running the 100 metres at Arsenal, which is good to hear. I didn't think it was that fast. I knew it was quick. Um, and I'll rate him. I think, he's, I think he's got a great future. And, and the shocking thing for me, which sort of relates to Ozil in a way, I'm really shocked about how, how many people have kind of pasted him, if you like, online and, and said just because he had that poor performance in the Champions League that, that he should, you know, it's much too early to be playing him. Well, it looks because... Because of the suspension of Callum Chambers, who I'll come to in a bit, and Matthew Debushi being out still, it looks like he's going to play against Hull City. And personally, I think he's going to have a really good game. He, he did well um, on the occasions I've seen him play, but obviously in the Champions League, it was probably too much too soon. And against a top German side, clearly he wasn't going to be... And away from home as well, obviously, made it doubly difficult, or triply difficult, if you like. And... Uh, Anyway, uh, Elisa Mertesacker, the, the player that everyone says should be captain, has actually spoken out and said that Hector Bellerin should, should take his chance. And he also added that it's, it's pretty tough to establish yourself as a young player at Arsenal. I'm not going to read all of what he's come up with, but he said uh, he needs to talk as well, so that suggests he's a little bit quiet. And that's what I demand from him. He listens a lot and he's a good guy. Well... We'd expect that, wouldn't we? Anyway, he's a good guy and he's a good player. And I, I personally really expect uh, Bellerin to go from strength to strength at Arsenal. Whether he's going to really break in the team, break into the team long term is another story, mainly because Callum Chambers is standing in his way. And uh, brings me on to another one of my topics. Callum Chambers has been uh, slated by certain people after his England performance against San Marino, which I thought was grossly unfair. Yes, he gave the ball away, but so did so many other England players. And this guy's making his debut, right? And he's a teenager. And quite honestly, I think I think I really believe that Callum Chambers is the future when it comes to uh, English's uh, the English defensive woes, if you like. I think he's the best defender I've seen in a long time who's English. So I, those people slanging him off now are going to be eating a lot of humble pie. Trust me on that, because. Because Callum Chambers, he's just got everything. He's got everything. He's got height. He's got physicality. He's got pace. And he is good in the air. He's good on the ground. He reads the game well. What what weakness does he have? The only one I can think of, inexperience. And this guy, he's 19 and he plays like he's 35 mentally. I think the guy's got a huge amount of talent. And I'll be most surprised if he doesn't make it. The only thing that can stop him is injury. And of course... That brings us back to strictly cropped passing, which I might mention a few times because I'm so proud of that headline. Not really, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so um, what was I going to say? I was going to talk about I was going to talk about our injury crisis taking a turn for the worse in this very snappy headline uh, during the international break. Thanks to the Metro. Thank you for that really long but slightly snappy headline. And then and then I wrote. I'm not going to give you the whole story because it's quite long. Meza Ozil is out, is he? Oh, for 10 to, 10 to 12 weeks with a partially ruptured collateral left knee ligament. Well, I was going to say something about collateral damage then, but I decided to steer clear of that, that stupid remark, which I've just come out with verbally instead. 
Shad Forsyth was supposed to put a stop to all this. Instead, we're stopped with Crocs and unable to fire our one smoking barrel on that famous cannon. Yeah, that's not a bad expression, is it? Somebody else might use that. Anyway, according to The Sun, which I happen to read in uh, pret manger see, you can speak French as well, uh, especially when I'm eating nice food. Theo Walcott, 37 matches is missed, according to The Sun, and uh, probably no more. But actually, according to The Sun, he's out until the end of October, so um, when are we playing next? It's not quite the end of October, is it? Um, Abu Dhabi is uh, missed 35, Ramsey 21, Nicholas Bento, did we miss him? But anyway, missed 19, technically. Yaya Sonogo 15, Jack Wilshire 13, Monreal 12. It's getting boring, isn't it? So Gibbs and Nabry also 12. The, the next bunch are Giroud and Vermaelen. And Vermaelen, obviously, in history, as far as we're concerned. Kalstrom, who he signed as a croc. Obviously, he was bound to miss games and he missed 10. Arteta's been out for 8. Uh, Ozil, 8. And obviously, he's going to be a lot more than that. Oxley chamberlain with his groin, has been out for 6. Um, it sounds like he's brought, brought a puppet along with it. Here he comes, Oxley chamberlain with his groin. Uh, it would be a very inappropriate name for a, for a puppet, though. Debushi, um, 5. He's missed 5. Koscielny, 4. Flamini, 3. Rosicki. This was the big surprise. Rosicki, three. He's missed three games. And Ospina, also three. And uh, I was a bit surprised about him being injured again, apparently. Uh, I think it's hip. Uh, according to physioroom.com, as I said, I'm not going to take the blame if it's incorrect. But you don't know who to trust nowadays. Trust me, that's all I'm saying. Anyway, Rio Mia Ichi uh, didn't make the list, strangely enough. But uh, obviously, he would have made the bench you'd like to think, for some of the Premier League games. Uh, and talking of Rio Miyagi, I, I had a little look at how he's getting on at FC Twente. And um, he's played um, less than 180 minutes. He's played four games, though, so he's getting, what, how many How many minutes a game? Somebody help me out on that. About 40-something minutes a game, isn't it? Round about. So he's getting half a game every every match, if you like. So, yeah, he's going he's gonna to clock up the experience and that's what he needs and and I wouldn't like to rule, rule out the possibility of him coming back and being a success although I'd have to say it's, it seems a tad unlikely uh, at Arsenal at least but um, but with Rio um, what else was I going to say about him he's, yeah, he's got the right attitude and I, and I really feel I really feel confident that he'll make it somewhere and, and certainly once he gets past all these injury problems and, and Holland seems to work for him maybe it's because um, there's a direct flight from uh, from Holland all the way back to, I don't know if he goes to where he's from though, but it is certainly a direct flight all the way back to uh, to Japan. Uh, <clears throat> I have to check, <clears throat> I have to check the flight's <clears throat> schedule. Sorry about the frog in my throat suddenly. Anyway, um, what should I say now? I've suddenly suddenly got tongue-tied and a frog in my throat, so that, that, that makes it doubly difficult to continue. But I will say this, Thomas, Thomas Rosicki, <clears throat> only missing three games, as I said before. How can that be right? Surely he missed more than that. I mean, he wasn't called sick note for without a reason. But, you know, the thing that really got me, and this is why I wrote this article, <clears throat> and, and this is why I'm probably choking on myself at the moment, is that Meza Ozil, Meza Ozil, to me, is a class act. I'm not saying he's as good as Fabregas. And I... You know, people might say I'm disloyal for still saying Fabregas is one of the best midfielders in the world, but I still maintain he is, which is why I can't understand why we didn't get him. He's adaptable as well. That is the problem. With Ozil, he's not adaptable. He is a number 10, and that is it. So playing him out in the wing is just doing him a disservice. Obviously, now he's cropped, so Arsene Wenger doesn't have that problem to, to deal with. But why buy a player who's a number 10 and put him in a number 11 position, if you like? Playing left wing for me, for a, for a player that, that should play through the middle, it just doesn't make sense. I know he played there for Germany, but they've got a lot of good players around supporting him and helping him to sort of get through playing in a position that's un, not unfamiliar to him, but but not his strength. And and this is this is what I feel is completely wrong. But hey, I'm not the manager, am I? But I'm st I'm still entitled to bleat about what I think should change. So. Um, Anyway, basically, the, the the essence of my article really was that um, we shouldn't worry too much about Ozil being out. What will 
what is likely to happen is the fixture list becomes kinder to us because this season I didn't predict us getting off to a flyer because I thought our fixtures were reasonably tough and obviously getting the Chelsea game and the Man City game out of the way and the Spurs game is really good news as far as we're concerned and we didn't pick up an awful lot of points from those um, two, was it? Two points from those three games. But still, not a disaster. So because of that, I, I have a little bit of optimism that we will start picking up more points, even though we've got a, quite a number of top players in sick bay at the moment. So I think, I think that's going to make the difference. One thing, or two things that won't make the difference, are one by the name of Ruzicki and the other one by the name of Diaby. If they come in as Ozil replacements, I've predicted quite a dire future ahead. But having said that, perhaps... Perhaps it won't be that dire given given some fixtures that are coming up. Even those players can produce a certain amount. I wouldn't call it magic, but they produce a certain amount of what's what's something sort of quite a lot below magic, but but well above the tragic. I think that's where those two are at really. I know I know Rosicki is really popular with a lot of fans, and I, I've failed to see why. To me, he just he runs around when the camera's on him, and as soon as the camera's off, he stops running and. Uh, the other day when I saw him come on as a sub, first thing he did, give the ball to the opposition. And then the next thing he does is foul somebody in a dangerous position. And call me old-fashioned or call me whatever you like, but personally, that sort of player wouldn't be in my team and I certainly wouldn't be giving him a new contract. And on that note, I did read today, strangely enough, even though it supposedly happened some time ago, that Rio Miyaichi has signed a new contract at Arsenal. I find that hard to believe. I I hope it's true, but um, but anyway, that's what I read. So so believe it or not, that that's what some internet websites are saying, or perhaps it's just one. Meanwhile, Robert Pires says we will win the league if we sign Sammy Kadira, and in fact, he says when we sign Sammy Kadira, which is reassuring that he actually has got the inside track. And another another website or a newspaper website actually compared Sammy Kadira to Patrick Vieira. Apparently Pires did that. Wow. That is that is some comparison to make. So um what have I not covered now? Edinson Cavani. There is still talk that we may go out and sign him. Well I'm just gonna dismiss that talk completely because I just don't believe it at all. Not that now that we've got Danny Welbeck, I think I think most of our problems, if we had any at all in the first place, in terms of our forward, our forwards, I think it's more or less, more or less out the window now because I think, I think we've got some, we've got lots of different. You know, you know how they say Arsene has got no plan B. Well, he may not have a plan B as such, but he's got players that can make it seem like we've got a plan B because we've got Giroud coming back in December, according to PhysioRoom.com. We'll see about that. I think it'll be more like early January. We've got Yaya Sonogo on the way back, and he is a handful. He might not be able to score many goals, if any, but he's a handful and no one wants to play against him. And Welbeck also is a handful, and not only a handful, he's now starting to score goals. So I've got a lot of confidence in Welbeck that he's going to really produce goods for Arsenal. And clearly a lot of a lot of uh, Manchester United fans are unhappy that he's, that he's been allowed to leave their club. So I think I've actually managed, uh, managed here to cover every everything that I promised I would talk about. And that may be a first. So on that on that happy note, I will say until the next time, away. No, it's it's wrong. I said it wrong. Away.